Hey everyone, Justice Good here, and in this video I'm going to go over the basics of Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CS6, but this will work in almost any version. So to start off, the starting point in any working on any file is going to the File menu bar. Here you can open a new file with File New, or you can open previous files that you've been working on, or open photos that you have on your desktop or computer. So to start off, we're going to work with File New. The shortcut for that is Command N. You'll always see the shortcut to the right if there is one. Um, get used to or get in the habit of using shortcuts. It's going to it's going to make working in Photoshop a lot easier. Um, but I'm going to try to to show you everything I'm doing in this video. I'm not going to use shortcuts for this basics video. So when you click File New, it'll open up this tab, which lets you select the width and height of your new canvas. Um, you can also name it, so I'll name it Basics, but you don't have to name it. It'll just be untitled otherwise. Let's go to the Presets menu and just preset default Photoshop size. Um, but let's make it a little bigger. So if we work in pixels, let's make it 900 by 900 pixels. The resolution is if you're working with print or other forms of media, you can raise the resolution as needed and the color mode if you're working with print or other forms of media you can change the mode of color so we'll leave it at red green blue and the background contents uh, we will leave it at white so if you click OK you'll get a new blank white canvas and you might see this lock here that means the layer is locked partially which means you can't do certain things to it like move it so we'll just double click the layer and click OK it'll unlock everything you can also name your layer by double clicking it um, so we're gonna name this bottom the way Photoshop works is kinda like imagine if you were taking a top-down view from like if you're in a helicopter and you're looking down on your canvas everything at at the top on is going to show over layers at the bottom so if we make a new layer we'll go to layer new layer or shift command n um, so that's a new layer and we make another new layer I'm gonna use the shortcut this time shift command n and click OK. We now have two new layers, layer one and layer two. So I'm going to name layer one middle and layer two bottom. Now you see this gray and white checked pattern? That is Photoshop's pattern that tells you it's transparent. There's nothing there. So when you see that pattern, that means there's nothing there. Um, each layer also has its own little eyeball next to it which shows you the visibility so I can make that bottom layer invisible so you don't see that white anymore all you see is transparent I can make it visible again each layer also has blending modes if you go to this drop down menu that says normal Photoshop gives you ways for each layer to blend into each other it's all based off different mathematical formulas and I'll show you them in a second um, not the math but <laughs> I'll show you how some of these look in a second. Each layer also has its different opacity and fill. So that shows you how transparent or opaque something is. Um, so on the middle layer here, if we click it, whatever layer is highlighted is the one that you're working on. On the middle layer, if we use our paintbrush tool, which is right here, we'll just use the basic default brush. If you don't see that, just hit this little wheel cog drop down menu and click basic brushes OK and we'll just use just click the first one here and increase the size to 100 pixels also this is your color palette a little bit lower here is the default colors black and white if you click this little square here, it'll reset you to the default foreground and background colors. 
or if you hit D on the keyboard. Also, you can switch between your foreground and background color by clicking this little arrow or X on your keyboard. So I'm going to paint with black here as our foreground color. And as you can see, I'm working on the middle layer. So if I paint black here, you can see I can hide or unhide that layer and it shows everything underneath. And this layer shows over the bottom layer. Oops, I named the top layer bottom. I'm going to fix that. So you can always double click top. Okay. So working on our middle layer here, we can paint. Now the most, if not, or one of the most important tools in Photoshop, if not the most important, is going to be your Edit Undo tool. This will undo the previous step you did. So just to show you what is going on here, if you go to Window and you go to History, this will bring up your History window, which is right here in my version. This shows you every step that you've taken so far. And it doesn't show you, I think it has a limit of like 100 or so, which you can change, but for this tutorial, it'll be fine. You can see I opened the new file, I made a layer, I changed the layer's name, all the way up into this step right here. Clicking on any one of these points will take you backwards. But so let's say I've made a whole bunch of brushes, but I don't like those and I want to go back. If I just go to edit, undo, I can undo a step edit step backward I can step backward one more edit step backward I can step backward again so that is probably one of the most important things you can know in Photoshop is the edit undo or the fact that Photoshop has a history panel and you can work forward and backward so get to know that um, so just like I can brush here and step backward I can also step forward. Alright, so let's say I like what I've done here and I want to keep it. You can see I was working on the top layer. So if I go to the middle layer and let me change the color to red here. This is the color picker. If you just click on one of these squares it opens it up and you can pick any color you want in any hue or shade. You can even enter the specific color code. So I'll just pick red here. And I paint in the middle. You can see it shows over my white bottom layer, but it's under my black top layer. And I'll hide the top layer, I'll hide the middle layer, and I'll hide the bottom layer. So you can see each of them is like a piece to a sandwich and at the end you're look, going to be looking at it like top down. And that's how they all combine. So that's how layers work. So just working, I'm going to undo that. And I'll actually delete the middle layer here. So just working on the layer above here, oh, by the way, you can delete stuff by right clicking, clicking delete layer, or what I did is I just clicked and dragged it to this little trash can here. But just working on the top layer here, if you click the erase eraser tool, like if it's too far for you to undo it and you just want to get rid of some stuff, I can click the eraser tool and I can just erase things. Um, or you could just make a new layer, but there's a ton, there's a million different ways to do any one thing in Photoshop. But so now I have that blank layer that I'm working on. I erased everything on it. I just wanted to show you how the eraser works. I'm going to show you how the brush tool works pretty simply. So you have that 100 pixel brush. Of course, you can make brushes bigger or smaller. So you have 200 pixel brush. 
a 100 pixel brush. Pretty simple concept. But each brush you can adjust the hardness of it too. So here is 100% hardness, 100% opacity, and 100% flow. I'm going to use, I'm going to push D on my keyboard or click this black and white thing to go back to black and white so I can paint in black. But again, 100% hardness, 100% flow. If I take the hardness down a bit, about 25%, you see it softens up the edges. So the brush is a little bit softer. If I take that down even further to 50%, you can see even softer 25 percent and all the way down to zero completely soft brush so that is the different hardnesses I'm gonna go ahead and drag that layer to the trash can delete it and layer new layer uh, I'll show you how some of the other different menu items like opacity work so here's a hundred percent opacity about seventy five percent about fifty percent twenty five percent and completely it doesn't let you do zero because that would be useless, but 1%. So you can adjust the different opacity. And of course, you can combine this with hardness. So here is a 50% opacity and 50% hardness. So you can, you can adjust the brush in all different kind of ways. I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer, create a layer, new layer with shift command N or layer, new layer, and I'll show you how the flow works. So 100% flow, about 70% flow, about 50% flow, 25% flow and 1% flow. I'll increase the hardness of the brush just to show you a little bit more accurately. You can see when I lower the flow compared to full flow, you can see it kind of spreads out each one of those brush points. So it flows, it's kind of like if you were to press down hard on your pencil or paintbrush versus lightly uh, stroking the pencil or paintbrush across the paper without much pressure. So moving on from brushes, um, we're going to get into actual photo editing. So if you want to save your work for later, so you can work on it later, just hit File, Save As. I can save this as Basics on my desktop as a format, as a Photoshop file. If you just wanted to save it as a final picture so you can upload it somewhere, you can save it as a JPEG or PNG or any other form. But we'll save it as a Photoshop file. If you like, you can open it up and play with it later. Now you can close it and you don't have to worry about it being gone forever. But if you want to open a new file, go to File, Open, and here I can open something that I already had on my desktop or computer like a JPEG file. So I'll open this JPEG file that I already had on my desktop and we can get started editing this. So you need see there's a new history pa panel and there's a completely new tab for this. It's its own file. Um, but you can see Photoshop says it's at 50 percent. That means right now this Photoshop is showing you this image at 50 percent of its original size. If you change that to 100% here on the bottom left, you can see this picture is actually really this big. I'm going to go to Image, Image Size, 
and we're going to shrink that down a little bit so it's easier to work with and I'm going to shrink it down to about 1200 pixels wide and if, if you have constrained proportions checked that means everything will be proportionate so it won't lose its original proportions now I can see the whole thing at 100% and I will show you guys how some different layer blending modes work so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer by clicking right clicking it and duplicating it that makes a copy of that layer on top of it a shortcut for that is command J so now I have two copies um, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete the top one alright so you should just have your background and your background copy blending modes um, when you have multiple layers and you're looking straight down on them like how Photoshop is like a sandwich you can change each layers blending mode so right now it's on normal it's just going to show you the the image if I set this to multiply it's only going to take the dark parts of this image and kind of blend them on top um, see I'll, I'll go to my pointer my move tool here and move it around and you can kinda of see here how this image is blending see the dark parts of the image are blending whereas the light parts are getting taken over by what's underneath if I set this to screen it's kinda of like the opposite whatever's underneath this layer is gonna take over all the dark parts when it's on screen um, but the light parts are going to show through. So it's all it's all based on like color codes and, and different math formulas. But if you play around with it, you can kind of get familiar with how each one works. I'm going to just flip through a couple. Here's overlay. Kind of overlays it on top of the image. Here's soft light. Here's hard light. Hard light kind of takes the, what's underneath and overlays it on top of this image. Um, difference, exclusion, hue, color. It's, it's something you have to play around with and I can get more in depth in future videos. But just know that each layer can blend into one another in, in its own specific way. You can set the blending mode for every layer in Photoshop and that's how you can achieve certain effects. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, if you want to adjust your image in other ways, the image adjustments panel is also one of the most important. Here you have where you can adjust the colors and the contrast and the brightness of your image. So I'm going to flip through some of the most uh, valuable menu items here. So the brightness and contrast image adjustment is going to allow you to adjust the brightness, how bright or dark, and how contrasted or dull you want your photo. So this is a useful uh, adjustment tool for when you just want to kind of tweak your photo a little bit. I'll hit cancel so it doesn't show. Image adjustments levels. It splits your photo into lights and darks almost. So you have your lows, your mids, and your highs. So if I take my highs and I slide them to the left, it's going to make it more contrasted. If I take my darks and I slide them to the right, it's going to make them more dark. If I take my middle slider and lean it either way, it's see it's kind of stretching out the darks. Everything from here to here is going to be dark, and then it only gives Photoshop from here to here to be light. If I stretch out those lights, it's going to show all the lights more. It, it, it lets you select kind of like the different ranges that you want Photoshop to use. Same thing here, output levels. Photoshop is only going to output whatever spectrum you give it. So right now it's giving you the entire range from black 
to white. If I take this black and I slide it up, I'm only going to let Photoshop output from this shade of gray to white. So you can see how in the picture all the blacks disappeared. If I take this slider, I slide it left, I'm only letting Photoshop output this range of dark gray to light gray. So you can use this to achieve certain effects in combination with other adjustments. Also, I'm working on all three channels right now of red, green, and blue, but you can break it down further into one or the other. So this is working on the red channel. You can work on the green channel. And that's just red, green, blue, you know, color, color theory, which I won't go over, but how red, green, and blue can be combined and subtracted to create any color in the spectrum. Then you have image adjustments curves, which is probably one of the most powerful image adjust color adjustments that you can use. And it's like a line here. So you have your entire input from black to white. So what this little histogram in here is, how much of your photo is black? So you can see all these pixels here because there's a lot of black in the hair. And how much of your photo is white? There's a lot of white in the sky and then your mids. So this line here is at a straight line right now, a straight diagonal line through. The image is normal. But if I take the bottom left point, which represents the shadows, and I move it upwards so that Photoshop can only use a certain amount of output, only from this amount of gray all the way up into that amount of white, you see that the image, uh, all the blacks have disappeared from the image. And the output as well, it's only going to let Photoshop use from this amount of gray to this amount of gray. You can also the, with curves though you you can put points on this line and move them to create a curve so you can change the input so it's a it's a pretty it's a complex tool but i have a video going more in depth on it on my channel if you search for it but this is one of the most powerful photo adjusting tools um you can use it to add contrast get certain photo effects um, again you can do each channel separately so you can adjust the red channel the green channel and the blue channel and overall you see how you have adjusted each little curve to come up with the final photo effect definitely play around with this tool and you'll, you'll start to see how it works um, and feel free to check out my tutorial on it for a little different of a look. But in any of these adjustments, you can ha you can set presets if you really like this. You can save this preset, um, and you can use Photoshop's presets. So save or use Photoshop's presets. So very powerful tool. Again, all these tools. You can achieve the same effect with different tools, but there's not one right way to do things, but there's just different tools to do it. So whatever tool you like using, one may be a little bit better for what you want to do. Okay, so quickly I'm going to go over some of the color ones. Um, hue saturation lets you change the hue and the saturation of the photo. So it changes the, the hue spectrum. You can make it more saturated or less saturated. You can make it brighter or darker. You can also click colorize and it'll colorize it all to one hue, as saturated or desaturated as you want that to be, and as light or as dark as you want it to be. You can also go to image adjustments color balance. This can let you tilt the sliders of red or cyan, magenta or green, yellow or blue for both the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights of your photo. 
So if I want my highlights to be more yellow, I can s click highlights and slide the yellow slider up. If I want my shadows to be more blue, I can slide that up. So you can see how my highlights are now more yellow and my shadows are more blue. It's a very powerful tool, very useful. You have the image adjustments desaturate, just totally desaturates your current layer. So I'll undo that. Um, there's a couple other adjustments in there, but those are some basic ones. So just know that there's a there's an adjustment or slider for every type of um, adjustment you want to make. So if you want to make something more contrasted, you can do that. If you want to make something a little bit more of a certain color, you can do that as well. And if you want to change the shadows and highlights and midtones of your photo, you can do all of that. Um, so that was working image adjustments right on right on the layer, but even more useful is layer new adjustment layers. So all the same things that we just went over, for example, layer new adjustment layer color balance, and you click OK, and you can do all the same things like making the shadows more blue and the highlights more yellow but you see that this created a whole new layer for that adjustment so I wasn't working directly on top of the layer this is useful because when you're working with a large image and you want to apply an adjustment over the entire file you can just put an adjustment layer over top of the whole thing so that's very useful um, you can hide or not hide that but you can see this color balance adjustment layer will affect everything underneath it without altering the original layer. So I showed you the adjustments but whenever you're working you want to kind of be working in new layers so you can always go backwards and nothing is too permanent. Um, so I'll, I'll delete that adjustment layer but that's one thing to note. Work with layer new new adjustment layers rather than right on top. I mean there's a time for each but you definitely want to be aware that you can create a new adjustment layer over everything and that's how I usually work with them. And actually if I go backwards here edit undo and don't delete that layer so so this is that adjustment layer I just had I can even change the blending mode of this adjustment layer to something like soft light and it just shows you how you can stack and combine different things in Photoshop to have an infinite possibility of results so even that even your blending and adjustment layers you can blend even more so I can take those adjustment layers and set them to different blending modes. Um, just another very powerful combination you can do. Now I'll delete that. Uh, a few more things in Photoshop you have. So we have under the brush tool, we went over the eraser tool. You know how to move things. You can also create selections using the marquee tool so you can click and drag and create a certain selection you can right click and deselect that if you didn't like it if you click and hold shift you can constrain the proportions so that no matter what it's going to be a perfect square just like when you're painting with your paintbrush here I'm going to make it a little smaller if I click and hold shift and then move I'll undo that so I'll work in a white so you can see it if I click and then shift and move you can see it'll constrain it to a right and left line and also it'll only let me paint inside my selection um, so I'm only painting inside the selection here click hold shift constrains to a straight line click and then hold shift and click on a different point will connect the two points. 
So that is the selection tool. I'm going to go ahead and just edit step backward, which is Alt Command C, all the way back to I, where I don't have any paint markings in there. And if I go back to my selection tool and I right click, I can layer via copy. On, so I can copy the selection onto a brand new layer while still leaving everything on this layer intact. So now I have it on a brand new layer. I can click my move tool and move it around. Um, I can even edit it and transform it. This is a very uh, powerful tool in Photoshop. You can transform layers or selections. So the shortcut that you want to use for this is Command T. This will bring up the free transform. Uh, edit free transform. So here it's going to give you the ability to click and rotate. Again, holding shift will kind of constrain things to 15 degrees at a time and not holding shift will let you free transform. You can move it around. You can shrink it or make it bigger. Again, holding shift constrains it so it's proportionate. So let's say, oops, I made it all shrunken. I can command Z or edit undo. And I can even pull each corner in a separate way if you hold the command key. I can take one corner and tilt it. I can hold shift and command at the same time to keep it proportionate. You can hold the alt key and and command at the same time and that will that will use both it'll kind of pull the top left and the bottom right corner rather than if you let go of the alt it'll only pull the one corner holding the alt will pull both corners but I'll go ahead and undo that so also when you're dragging if you hold shift and alt or option at the same time it'll drag the image in from both corners rather than one and if you hit enter you can go ahead and apply that transformation so very useful tool you can transform text you can transform anything on any layer or you can transform certain selections so just like there's a rectangular marquee tool to make selections I'll right click deselect that. There's also a circular or ellipses to make circular selections. Again, holding shift, perfect circle. Holding shift and alt lets you bring it outwards from both corners. There's also the lasso tool. So instead of just a square or circle, you can lasso out your very own selection and make any type of custom selection you want. With every selection as well, if you right click, you can refine that selection. So one common one is feather. So if I feather that 20 pixels, it kind of softens out the edges. Kind of like when you soften out a brush, it'll soften out the edges. So if I layer via copy this onto a new layer, you can see it's not so jaggedy it kind of softened out that selection. So I, I selected her face, feathered that selection, and copied it onto a new layer there. And again, you can edit, transform that as well. You can rotate it, warp it, whatever you want to do, free transform it. So I can hide that layer, I can hide that layer, unhide it, I can blend these layers on the layers underneath of them, overlay, screen, so very powerful tools. Clicking multiple layers at once, if I click, 
hold shift and select another layer I can select two layers at once so if I click the background layer hold shift and select a layer it selects every layer in between as well if I just want to select the top layer and the bottom layer I can hold command so I'm gonna select both of these layers and delete them both so hopefully this opens your eyes up to some of the tools in Photoshop how powerful it can be and you can see that once you start stacking these tools up to new layers and blending those layers you can really achieve anything you want to achieve um, hopefully this gave you a start so you can start playing around with it on your own practice is really the best way to get familiar and once you're familiar is when you can really start to create and achieve the things that you want to achieve so check out my channel for more specific tutorials um, I'm sure I'm going to be making further Photoshop basics in the future and I appreciate you watching thank you for watching and until next time